When you're working with a composer-based project and you're dealing with outside dependencies, ideally those dependencies are going to work exactly how you need them to, and they're going to be compatible with the application you're writing. But occasionally that might not be the case. Uh, as an example of this, I had an application where I was using this outside dependency called Color Extractor, uh, and everything was working fine, but I needed to update my server uh, to PHP 8, and I wanted all the applications on that server to be compatible with PHP 8. And when I did the update, I found that this outside dependency color extractor uh, had a limitation. It was not yet compatible with PHP 8. Um, and in fact, uh, digging around in the issues form for this package, I found uh, other people that were reporting a problem with this. Uh, they were even able to identify the specific thing within this code package that made it incompatible with PHP 8. So in a situation like this, best case scenario, the maintainer of this package would see this issue, uh, address the problem, and push an update for the package. But uh, that doesn't always happen on the timeline that we would like. Sometimes uh, maintainers of packages are busy with other things, or maybe there's a backlog of other fixes they need to make. Um, and so sometimes you kind of have to take things into your own hands, especially if you want to continue to use that package. And the way you can do that is you could create a fork of the repository, make the changes yourself, and then uh, use that forked version within your projects, at least until the original maintainer um, addresses the problem. Um, and that's what I'm going to show you in this video, how to make a fork of an existing package, and then how to configure Composer in your projects to point to the forked version of the repository rather than the original version. So with that goal in mind, let's jump right in. And the way I'm going to demonstrate this is I just created a brand new Laravel application. Uh, but what I'm going to show would work for any Composer-based project. In other words, any PHP project where you've got a composer.json file where you're uh, configuring your outside dependencies. Uh, and for our example, I'm just going to target one of the packages that is included by default with Laravel, this Guzzle package. I'm just going to create a forked version of it make a demo change within the code, and then show how we can point to the forked version. All right, so the first thing we need to do is go over to the GitHub repository for this package. So let me pull that up. Actually, I've already got it open in a tab here. All right, so here's the package in question, and I'm just going to click this button on the top right to fork it. All right, fill in any details I want about my forked version of this repository, and then go ahead and create it. All right, now I effectively have my own copy of this package. You can see it's listed under my uh, GitHub namespace here. All right, so at this point, I would want to make any changes that are necessary. Uh, if I was really digging into the code, I would probably clone a copy of this repository to my local development environment so I can work within my code editor there. Uh, but just for the purposes of this demo, I'm just going to quickly make a change to the code directly here within GitHub. And uh, let's just make a change to the readme file. All right, so I'm just going to edit this, and what I'll do is I'll just clear out all the default uh, readme content they have here, and I'll say this is my fork test. And then we'll come down and we'll commit this change. And there we go, there's the results. And if we go back to my forked version of this repository, you can see it's now uh, one commit ahead of the uh, original version of the repository. So with the fork set up, now we need to get our application to use this forked version of the package rather than the original version of the package, which it's uh, currently pointing to. Uh, and the way we're going to do that, we're going to add some configs to our composer.json file. Uh, and the configs we're going to add, I'm going to go over to the notes that accompany this video just so I can copy the configs we're going to need. It's under the section here, use the fork. We're going to add this repository section. So let me copy this, bring it over, and I'll just add it above my require section. Uh, and there's two settings we're going to set within repositories. We're going to first specify the type of repository we're going to be using. Here we're going to set it to VCS, which is short for version control system. And then the URL needs to point to the forked version of the repository we're working with. So in my example, that's just the Guzzle package under my GitHub namespace. All right, now the next thing we need to do is down here for the version constraint, we want to change this to point to the branch on this repository where our changes are. And in my case, if we go back to my fork, you can see I'm just working on the default master branch. All right, so wherever your changes are, you want to reference that branch. And when you're specifying the branch, you want to prefix it with dev dash. So we're going to say dev dash master. All right, and this dev is basically like a flag that when Composer is pulling in this package, it knows to be looking for it um, via some other source, right? We're not just looking for it in the original repository. We're going to get it from some other source. And in this case, it's going to be looking under our repository settings for that source. 
All right, so with that in place, uh, let's run composer updates. So let me bring up my terminal window. All right, just confirm I'm in the directory for this project and I'm just gonna run composer update. And then to confirm this worked as expected, I'm gonna dig into my vendor directory and find that Guzzle package. So it's still gonna be under the namespace for the package itself. So it's gonna be under Guzzle HTTP. And then we're gonna to go to the Guzzle package within there. But what we should see is it should be reflecting the code changes that I made in my fork. So if we look at the readme file, sure enough, there's the changes that I made. We're not seeing the content of the readme file as it was in the original package. So all in all, pretty straightforward process. You just create the fork and then a few extra settings in your composer config and you can point to it. Uh, now I should mention though that this should be considered a temporary fix, especially if you're working with an actively maintained package, you wanna keep an eye out for it. And the moment they address the issue that you're addressing in your fork, you should revert back to the original repository just so you make sure you're keeping up to date with other improvements and bug fixes, uh, bug fixes that might be coming through with that package. And to do that revert, you would just get rid of the repositories config that you've added and then change the version constraint back to some appropriate version. So in this case, it was, I think it was set to 7.2 before. All right, now uh, speaking to that, one thing I like to do when I'm uh, working with forked repositories is I like to include a comment for myself as to why I'm working with that forked repository, just so that when I come back to the application to work on it, uh, I have just like a reminder there to basically check in on the original repository and see if the issue's been addressed and see if I'm able to revert things. Uh, and the way we can leave a comment in our composer config file, it's a little weird. We basically just have to add another element to this um, object config, and we can simply just call it comment, and composer will ignore this, so we could put whatever we want here. So within here, just some short description explaining why uh, you're using this forked version, what issue is being addressed. Like I said, just so that you can periodically check in on it.